This person's phone call is so loud. Maybe somebody can translate that for me? What are they up to? What's going on? Hey guys, it's Ryan here, living in Ecuador, sharing this beautiful country with you. And today I am in the streets of Quito. I'm on an adventure to try as much Venezuelan food as I can find. There's a lot of good Venezuelan food in Quito. A lot of Venezuelans live in Ecuador. I'm gonna get more into that later. But first, I wanna get some food in my neck. First thing up is the national dish of Venezuela, or at least a version of it. I'm headed right here, this place behind me, and it's breakfast time, so let's go. Y'all don't know people like this. Y'all don't know people like this. Y'all don't know people like this. What is this? Un cabellon? Cabellon. Cabellon calimón. Or cabellon. Empanada or jugo? Empanada. Empanada. Cabellon. 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 Si, si. Para servirse o llevar? Uh, oh. Okay, aquí. Panela. Papelón. 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 Sí, mi amor. Sí, sí, hay uno. sí hay. Okay, uno. Adelante, mi amor. Mm. Oh, gracias. Okay, so this place is called El Negro y Su Empanadas. They specialize in empanadas. The name actually just means the black and his empanadas. Don't know, sounds kind of racist, but this is a pabellon. 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 Empanada. Pabellon. Pabellon. Is the national dish of Venezuela. Uh, but this is obviously in an empanada form. Mm. This place is pretty pumping. Every Venezuelan place I've been to in the city is always pumping. I guess mostly Venezuelans hanging out and they don't have too many options maybe. Maybe it's just a social thing, but it's always a cool atmosphere. So, pabellon is stewed black beans, shredded beef, usually some bananas and some rice. That's the national dish of Venezuela, but of course this is the empanada version. I can see the black beans. Oh, I just hit some banana. It's like a plantain, kind of grilled up. And there's some beef in there too. Tender shredded beef. So good. No rice in it, but that's probably for the best. Oh, that banana adds a really nice sweetness to it. So you might notice this is a little bit different color than some other empanadas. It's made out of corn flour, cornmeal. It adds a nice crispiness to it. Cornmeal really fries up crispy. It's still a little soft on the inside holds in those ingredients really well. Okay, it's chaotic in there. A lot of people, a lot going on, and I just felt a little intimidated. But I wanted to continue the video as I drank this and I ordered a bit more food here. What is this? Uh, this is a papelon. Okay, so the empanada was papelon, and this is papel papelon con limon. It's basically lemonade, but made with panela with like sugar cane juice. It's really tasty. It's a very popular drink in Venezuela. I also got an order of pequeños. They are breadstick, fried, and cheese inside. Mm. Salty cheese, good. Five for a dollar. Empanada was a dollar. The juice was about a buck. I can't remember. That was really good. I might have to save some of these for Sarah. Whoa. You can see the cheese. Nice hunk of cheese in there. Really soft bread. Good. Good stuff. I could probably spend all day at 
this place going through their menu, but I think I will move on and see if I can find probably the most popular food in Venezuela. So I won't tell you what it is yet, but I'll tell you in a bit. Okay, I made it to my second stop and I got here what looks like an amazing arepa. This is the most popular thing to eat in Venezuela, probably. They say about 70% of Venezuelans eat these on the reg. I got ground meat stuffed inside this corn, corn, uh, well this is their arepa. It's a type of bread and they don't always make them with corn, sometimes they make them with wheat, but in Venezuela a lot of wheat is substituted for corn, just like the empanadas and just like another dish you'll see later. This is super crispy on the outside. This is more of like a cornmeal. Cornmeal versus corn flour is just basically how much you grind it. Uh, let's bite into this. Lots of spices in there, like heat and just flavor. This sauce here looks so good. Let's try a dollop of that on there. I'll give you a ton of it too. Nope, I'm slopping on myself. Mm, that's really good sauce. I don't know what it is. It's good though. It's like really greeny, the flavors, like uh, fresh herbs. God, I'm a mess. And we got another sauce, which looks like it's an ahi made with red peppers. Probably spicy. Just a little bit. It's strong. It's definitely spicy, but something else in it. Oh, it is spicy. It's like habanero spicy, like that really strong burn. Oh. Makes my head itchy. It's kind of a cool little place. I'm sitting outside, right on a pretty busy corner, which is a bit unfortunate because it's loud, but I've got a rock climbing wall across from me. And this place is called Kericas. The Q apostrophe stands for K. That's like saying, that's delicious, or that's rich. Kericas Arepa. And they opened up in 1975. They've been around for a long time. So arepe is, like I said, they can be made out of wheat, they can be made out of corn flour, they can be fried, they can be steamed, boiled, baked. There's a lot of different varieties. It's, it's a type of bread. Venezuelans will eat arepes for breakfast. They'll eat them as sides to dishes. They'll stuff them like this one and eat them for lunch. It's really not known where the arepa was invented. It was either Colombia or Venezuela, but back when it was created, those two places weren't countries. It was before the Spanish came along. So this is a really old food, pre-Hispanic food that's still enjoyed today like crazy. But everybody does their own variety of toppings, so many options. So I wanna talk about the situation with Venezuela, why there are so many Venezuelans in Ecuador. It all starts about 10 years ago. Venezuela is an oil country. They rely on oil to make up their GDP by a huge amount. And when the oil prices dropped, also the oil production dropped because of lack of maintenance, lack of money invested in the oil industry. The people in charge at the time, which was Hugo Chavez, he just kept ignoring it, ignoring the problem. And the problem just kept getting worse. It came to a point where they didn't have any money for food. They weren't getting foreign money in because they weren't selling oil like they were. So no imports were coming in. And also they had to price control all the food. They had to control how much production of food was happening in the country. The government just really dropped the ball on the whole thing. And Venezuela started to starve to death. And really there wasn't much the people could do. They tried to do stuff, but somebody would speak out and end up dead. You know, there were a lot of sketchy things going on. At the same time, there was an 85% reduction in medicine no medicines were coming into the country. So you got people who are starving to death, who are, have chronic illnesses that can't get better. Of course, people started getting desperate. They started doing illegal acts to try to not starve to death. And the government, they decided to give more power to the defense minister who was corrupt and who was violent. And it obviously wasn't a great idea to do that. 
Of course, that led to people leaving the country. People started fleeing like crazy. It's the largest refugee crisis in recorded history in the Americas. They estimate that five to six million people have left Venezuela in the past like 20 years. That's about 13% of the population. I'll get back into this topic in a bit. I'm gonna finish up this arepa and then we're gonna go to one more spot and get one more dish. I'm getting full actually, but what time is it? 11 o'clock? Maybe I can kill an hour. All right, I am at my last destination. It's lunchtime. I'm waiting for my cachapa. I'm pretty excited to eat this. I've never had one before. It's basically a crepe with some cheese in it, but Venezuelan style. And this area right here, this is called La Predera, and it's a kind of like a food court. They're pretty popular in Ecuador. It's a series of restaurants. These ones happen to be in shipping crates. You can't really tell because there's wood on this one, but all these restaurants are basically shipping crates, and they're in a parking lot type space that's done up, it's covered. It's kind of kind of reminds me of like a food hawker stalls in Singapore. It's great because you can come and just like order from whatever stand you want, sit with your friends and everybody can order whatever they want. Ceviche, burgers, there's actually a Burger King in here. There's tacos, pizza, Chinese food, Japanese food as well. The place I'm eating at is called Los Chamos, Los Camos. And yeah, it's the flavors of Venezuela according to their sign. Pretty good option if you want to kind of go higher end. Oh, this is for me. Alright, this looks amazing. It looks giant and I'm not even that hungry. So essentially what we have here is a corn-based dough or like batter. So basically you pour it on a griddle and fry it up like a pancake. Inside is fresh cheese, what they call queso de mano, which means cheese of the hand or handmade cheese. And it, it looks like a lot of cheese. It looks good though. They'll put a variety of fillings in these. Yeah, different types of meat and cheese combinations as well as they do the papillon. Inside one of these as well, the beans, the, the shredded beef and the banana. Sounds like somebody's running a generator is too bad for you guys because I think they even do sweet kinds of these. They're a very popular street food in Venezuela. And it's an old dish just like the arepas that predates colonial times and I really want to eat it. So that's what I'll do now. I'm gonna try it with a little bit of maracuya. This is a maracuya dip. Maracuya is passion fruit. Wow, it's really good. The cheese is phenomenal. This sauce is really good. It has a sweetness to it. It's pretty savory otherwise. You can actually taste like, like feel the bits of corn in it, little kernels. I suspect they probably take corn, mush it up, and use that to make the batter. There's a lot of liquid in corn, obviously, so to do something like that with an arepa, you have to get all that liquid out. But with this, it's perfect. So I'm sure that's what they do with this, instead of using like corn flour, or corn starch, which is a better, I think, in my opinion, it's a better mouthfeel. Yeah, I like this a lot. It's not deep fried, which is nice. The other stuff I ate today was deep fried. And I just, it's a little much eating a bunch of deep fried items. I'm gonna try it with the super hot sauce, picante. Mm. That's beautiful. Good. It's not too, too bad as far as spice. It is spicy, but it's got a zestiness, like a brightness to it. Oh, it's starting to burn though. And I got one more sauce here. I think it's the same type of green sauce that I had at the last place. It was probably made out of um, parsley, maybe some cilantro. It's good too. It's almost like a creamy, I want to say like a ranch or something similar to that. I'm going to be so full by the time I finish this. So I wanna continue my talk about Venezuelans and Ecuador. When I first got here, they had just recently changed the law and they were allowing more Venezuelans in as kind of refugees. They didn't need visas, didn't matter if their passports were expired, stuff like that. A ton of them came in. They crossed over through Colombia and into Ecuador. They were crossing the border and just like 
like a lineup of Venezuelans walking across that border and trying to walk into Quito. It was a problem because a lot of them were in trouble. It's a long walk, their families don't have that much money. People were actually driving out there and helping them, giving them water and stuff. But it didn't take too long before the Ecuadorians said, okay, well, this is too much, there's too many coming in, we gotta change the laws back. So basically made it so they, they had to have a visa to come back, to come into Ecuador. The latest statistic I found is a couple years old, but it said that 400,000 Venezuelans are in Ecuador. About 2.3% of the population is Venezuelan now. So Venezuelans in Ecuador are usually less educated than Ecuadorians. They have more health problems. They have a harder time finding a job. So a lot more unemployed. And the ones that do have work, first of all, they work longer hours usually, and they get paid 42% less than Ecuadorians. There's a, a general fear that Ecuador is gonna become the next Venezuela. There's a big issue in the election that just happened. The first round happened and you know, I heard a lot of things like, don't vote for Arauz because he'll turn Ecuador into the next Venezuela. I think that's part of the reason why so many Venezuelans are experiencing racism here. I've talked to a lot of them. One of them said he's going back to Venezuela. He doesn't care. He just can't stand it here because people just treat him poorly. But I don't think it's out of like hatred for Venezuelans. I think it's out of fear, fear of what Ecuador might become. A lot of Ecuadorians believe that Venezuelans are a burden to the economy. But according to the statistics I've read, they're really not. According to a study done by the World Bank, their impact on the GDP is less than 1%. They represent fewer than 1% of the total number of Ecuador's health, education, and social service users. Other people say that crime has gone up because of them. But in actuality, since the boom in Venezuelans, crime has actually gone down in Ecuador. So that's not really true either. But probably the most important part is these are people too. They need your help. They're not affecting your lives at all. They're probably making your lives better. Have you tried their empanadas? Shut up and eat some delicious Venezuelan food. I mean, that's it for me. I want to thank you for watching. I apologize for the noise. I apologize for their, the brightness of my gray hairs, probably. Bye. When I'm by myself, I don't wanna hang around y'all. Pray for good health. One day I'm gonna go far. Fuck around and buy the whole mall. Breaking that cake. Texas have a hundred in the bank. Not a superhero, I'm safe. Look at my face. Look at my grace. Don't match up. No